everybody, it's Sam at Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make the slide and pop cards. Now the 5x7 size here I actually made for my Christmas series 2017. So I was going back through some of my old cards and I'm trying to, if I've made a card in 6x6, I'm trying to revisit it and make it in 5x7 or vice versa. So this is a really nice and popular style. And because I've made it in the 5x7, I thought it would be nice to revisit it and make it in a 6x6. So how these cards work, and if you want to know how to make the 5x7 size, I will share the link here. So if you click on that, it'll give you the tutorial and all the measurements for this size card. Basically, you just pull the little tab here and this happens. And it's really nice. It's got lots of room for sentiments. And I'm going to show you the stamp set I use in a moment because it's, it's become my favourite. <laughs> it's just worked perfectly with this Happy You collection. But I've got here just reveals for the birthday, for the beautiful birthday girl. Here it says a girl can never have too many handbags and it says love to shop. So it's just really, really cute. And then that just slides down there. So it's nice and flat and fit in an envelope. And then also you can open it up and write your message. So it will stand up like so, or they can have it displayed like that. So they are really, really fun cards. I've enjoyed making these, especially with this lovely new collection. So that's that one there. And then this is the six by six version. So I've made it as a top folding card. And this time you pull the little pieces here. If you do have something that says pull here, by all means you can use that, or you can have more of a, I guess a tab that, you know, it looks like a tab so someone will know to pull it. But again, I like to give my cards, most of them I give by hand. So I kind of tell the person what they need to do anyway. <laughs> but uh, you just pull this one up here. And again, it reveals these three sentiments. So you've got for the beautiful birthday girl again, kept the same one this one that says shoes are a girl's best friend and it says have a gorgeous day and again I've used washi tape I've used little faceted gemstones I've got this bow I've done heat embossing lots and lots is going on on this card and it just looks beautiful I really really love them and again this one inside I've just used the dies there from the collection and it stands up so I like that they stand up like a normal card and also they look really nice when they're flat and just look at all that rose gold sparkle and I know there's loads of you that have this collection and you are just gonna yeah well I know what you do because you show me on mixed up crafters so you're gonna go mad for it okay so for this card or for these cards that I've been making I actually use for the card blank this is a six by six card blank and if you see the pattern there. It worked really well with this collection and it's actually from this paper pack here. This is the Craft Sensations Light Textures and it's a beautiful paper pack of just backgrounds but it's all different close-ups of fabric and different wood grains and it's just yeah really really lovely so I used this one here might no which one oh I've used that one again because I cut it in half so I've got two cards out of it but that's a nice one as well. Okay again I'll share as many links as I can over on my blog. And then this is that new stamp set that I'm kind of raving about. This is by Craftwork Cards. I was sent this from Craft Stash and I got to choose it myself and I'm so glad I did because not only are all the sentiments nice and big, I mean, you've seen how lovely, you know, especially that one there. It's just, it's really, really great. But you've also got these perfume bottles here. And just to quickly show you how they work, I've made some cards already and these were coloured using my Arteza Everblends. And you've got the stamps that you can then stamp inside the bag. So although that's plain, I then used the bow and I used Have a Beautiful Day, which is that one there, and stamped it inside. So and there's that one there as well. So just it's a really, really handy stamp set to have. And I think if you've got those people in your life that love to shop and love shoes and handbags and perfume and stuff, it's going to be brilliant. This one I'm going to use soon. I think you are oh so glam. But yeah, brilliant. So again, all the links will be shared for that one. And then this is the Happy You collection. So I've got all the card pieces there. This is just the stuff I've been using. So I'm just going to put it all to one side because I will need it again for the card or when I show you what I've done. But that's how it looks. That's your 8x8 pad size and that's the 12x12. And if you do have the Happy You collection or you're thinking of getting it, I'd highly recommend that you get the Rose Gold Wow Embossing Powder. It just really does add to it and just complements that collection really well. Okay, so for this card, you're going to need a 6x6 card blank or cut a piece of 12x6 and along the 12 inch side, score at 6. Fold it in half and then I've got my card blank. Then we need our layer to mat on top. So I've just got this, it's actually a scrap piece of watercolour card, but it worked really well. That's five and three quarters by five and three quarters. Okay, so my standard kind of mats and layers here. And then this is my decorative piece, and this is five and a half by five and a half. And that one is going to go on top there. 
Then to kind of have as my, my pop-up piece, I've done this little piece here. And this is using the eight, you get these eight photo frames. So they're little like Polaroid shaped frames. And I just thought it, looked, it worked really well to create this kind of little topper. So I've heat embossed a girl can never have too many. And then I actually, this stamp is one long one. I actually cut it there so the shoes were separate. Anyway, you, obviously I'm not telling you to do that, but I wanted it. I didn't want it long for this one because it was a square card. So I've cut mine down. Anyway, then I just fussy cut the shoes and you can see there it's just really, really sweet. So yeah, I've just backed the back of it with some of the, it was like the marble effect card that comes in the pack. So that's my topper. Then you need this piece here, which is your pull piece. And this is three and a quarter by four and five eighths. Okay, so first of all, we're gonna start off with our five and a half by five and a half patterned piece. And you wanna flip it over. And, we're, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna come in at one inch from each side and just mark a pencil mark there and come in at one inch and mark a pencil mark, okay? And I'm gonna use my grid. So if I line my cardstock up here, I know that each of these squares is one inch, so I can just get my ruler, line it up with the one and the one, and also then it just kind of lines up with that pencil mark. You just wanna do a pencil line. So that bit's one inch, and you wanna do the same on that side, so you've got a one inch section there as well, okay? And these are all guides for us, it just makes it much easier for me to teach you guys how to make it. Then these lines here, you're coming in at one and a half. So again, just line your ruler up, and just put a marker at one and a half, and again here, put a little marker at one and a half. And again, I'm just gonna use my grid here. So the dots on mine mean half an inch. So again, I can just line it up there. Just do my pencil mark. And this one here, I just need to shift a little bit. I think I might cut my card stock slightly shy of five and a half, but it doesn't matter. As long as you stick with those equal measurements on each side, you'll be fine. Okay, and then from the top, you're coming down one inch. So again, Pencil mark at one inch, and down at the bottom, pencil mark at one inch, and again, do the pencil lines, okay? So this is where we're gonna be cutting. So what's gonna happen is, is we're gonna, I'm gonna, well, to make it easy for you guys, if you scribble as I scribble, then you'll know what's gonna happen. So we are gonna cut down from these points here. So if you put top and bottom, so starting from the top, you wanna put a little cross here and here, and you're gonna cut all the way down here, all the way across here, and all the way down here, okay? Then what this section is here is this is where we're gonna glue, okay? So it's where you can add your glue, and again, you can add your glue there, and glue, glue, uh, glue, glue, and all along here will be glue as well. This is the only section you're gonna cut, just this bit here. Don't cut from the top, you've gotta to start cutting from there. Now recently I was kindly asked again if I'd like to choose some stuff from Arteza and I always get really nervous when I have to use my cutting knife. I hate, usually I use this ruler here and I hate pushing down on it and I'm just so, my fingers are so close to the knife, it's always, always I've never liked it. So they had the metal triangle ruler and I just thought this is going to be really good because I can hold it at the top and the knife isn't going to, you know, I'm not going to risk cutting my fingers. So. Again, I'll share the links to all this, but, and with that I picked up and got to choose this little, well not little, it's quite a substantial knife set. So I've got the smaller blade here. I have changed, I swapped it I think, so I've got the nice fine precision one. Um, I like that it's all contained as well. So now what I'm going to do, is just with my ruler, is I'm going to line my ruler up and I'm going to start cutting from here down to here. Okay, so I'm just going to line my ruler up like so, and you wanna push the knife into the metal ruler. I'm also using a self-healing mat, so I've got no risk of me ruining any nice table underneath. So now, this cuts like butter, but it's just cut right through there from that point to that point. I'm gonna do both the sides and then do that bottom one. Then I'm gonna, again, pop my ruler right up on that line, like so. Okay, and now we just need to join up those two. And now that just comes away perfectly and I've just got really nice points. It's just made a big difference using that so I'm really pleased I picked that up. Okay, so now we need to do a couple of score lines and all the scoring we're doing is only gonna be within this flap, okay? So we wanna do a score line at four inches but you wanna hover your stylus all the way over until you get into that piece that you've just cut and just score at four. 
Okay. Okay, next we need to score halfway between that score line that you've just made and this line here where we first started cutting. Now that section is three inches long, so we need to score at one and a half from there, which will be the two and a half marker. But again, hover your stylus, and then when you get to that piece that you've cut, score. And that will be at two and a half, which will be halfway. And then you want to do the last score line will be that one inch marker between the two crosses. Okay, like so. Flip it over and you want to fold that one back, the middle score line as a mountain, and then that last score line as a valley. Okay, so you'll have a valley, mountain, and valley fold, and that will give you this mechanism. Okay, so it's very easy to do as long as you just follow that system there. Okay, next we want our mat layer and that piece we just cut, and this will sit over the top of it. So make sure you center it, okay, so you've got a nice even border, and you just want to imagine that you've pulled this piece up, okay, so have it about halfway, your triangle, if I just bring it to the side, you can see there how I've got it, okay, so again, lie that down, roughly bring that up, and what you want to do is you want to mark with a pencil just a line roughly there and on each side, you don't need to do the whole thing, you make sure you do it lightly so you can rub it out, so now I'm going to take it away, I've got this section here, and that's where I can stamp my image. Now the one I'm going to do is for the birthday girl. Because I've got, have a beautiful day, I've got, a girl can never have too many shoes. So then I thought I'd have for the birthday girl. So I've already had it in here. I'm just going to pop that one in there. And then because I'm going to be doing some heat embossing, I just want to prep my surface first. So I've got my embossing buddy here, and the key is to really rub that over. So although you can't see it, a very faint powder is coming out. And it's just removing any grease marks and any kind of stickiness that might be there, that you, any oils, anything that you can't really see, it will remove. And then, because I've used this already, I'm going to bring this down. And it should fit. See, at the, also, you can pull that up even more. So if I just quickly show you, for example, here. Although I pull it up to there, I can go even further. So for this stamped image that I've got, I'll probably end up pulling it up a little bit higher. But it will be fine. So I'm going to lay that one down within that space. That looks about right. Pick that one up. And then I've got some of the Versamark here. This is your watermark stamp pad. And I'm just going to that up, lay that down, and these have been stamping really nicely. And if you look to the side, I mean, I don't know how well that's picking up, you can just see it there, but I know I can go over that another. So I'm just gonna again ink that up, and yeah, I've got a nice impression now. So just pop all that away. Okay, so I've just got a piece of copy paper here just to catch all of my powder, and I'm just gonna sprinkle over this. Wow. I don't usually show this, but lots of people ask to see how I obviously do my heat embossing. So I thought I would keep this piece in. So you can always fast forward this section. And then I've just got this brush here, very fine, small one. These are from Arteza as well. And they are perfect for just going in and just, you want to remove, although I've got a perfect impression, I've got a few little extras and I'm just brushing them away because they will set. If you do get the odd one, you can also pick them off with a sharp pokey tool. But this is great because I can get in to any tiny little bits, which you probably can't see at all on camera, but they are there. And they bug me if they're there when I've heat set it. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So I'm just gonna clear all this up. And now I'm gonna heat set it. Now the key to this as well is making sure that your heat gun gets nice and warm. So give it 30 seconds or so, and then heat set it. So I'm gonna put this on high speed now so you don't have to hear all this. Okay, so that has now beautifully melted. And whenever you heat emboss, you will get some warping. Now because this is gonna be stuck down, it's fine, but I would never recommend that you kind of heat emboss directly onto your card front because it's just gonna, that's what your card's gonna look like. <laughs> Even if you've got really thick card, you're gonna get warping. So I try and kind of just mold it slightly back into shape. You can also put it in between a book, 
if you want to kind of leave it there overnight or something but like I said we're going to add adhesive to the back of this and it's all going to get stuck down don't rub it straight away because sometimes they do take a few minutes not even that but just uh, you know 30 seconds or so to just completely set but I'm just going to now rub away my pencil mark okay next I'm going to add some double-sided tape onto the back okay and then you just want to carefully lay that down on top of your card blank Okay, next you want this piece here and we're going to attach this onto this piece here. So what we're going to do is we're going to add glue along this tab here, okay, and we're going to be sticking this on. What you want to do before that is you want to stamp your little message that you're going to have that pops up. And I would say if you mark with a pencil at one and three quarters down, everything above that is where you can stamp your message, okay? So if you do that first, and then I'm going to flip this piece over here, and I'm going to add, I just find it a bit easier with the double-sided tape. You don't have to, but I've got this half-inch double-sided tape, so I'm going to stick that right in that section there. Okay, make sure that's all stuck down. Take the backing off. In fact, before I take the backing off, I'm going to show you what you need to do. This is going to stick. Turn it over. This is going to stick and run right at the bottom of this. is going to run along the bottom of this piece and you want to make sure you've got an equal overhang and it should sit perfectly within those two one inch pencil lines okay so I've left a little bit maybe one eighth of an inch and then you add your glue because I didn't want to have it so that you had you added the glue right up to it because the likelihood is it's going to catch and stick but with that one eighth of an inch little gap it should run and you know move freely okay so I'm going to take the backing off now I always like to use my grid and line things up because it does kind of keep everything in line. And then I'm going to try and get my hand out of the way. I'm trying to keep this piece flat. There we go. I'm going to sit my ruler down and then I can hover that over so it doesn't bounce up. And the pencil marks will help you keep everything straight. Okay. So that is all that's going to be stuck down, just that piece. So now when that slides up, you can see it gives us that mechanism. Okay, and it should. Obviously there's another thing as well, you want to make sure that whatever you stamp doesn't kind of poke out, because otherwise you could have like that poking out, for example. But I've done it just so that everything is just concealed and you've got about a quarter of an inch overhang there with the tab. Then we're going to be sticking this now onto the card like that. And again, everything should be lined up. You should have a nice equal border and then we're going to add glue. So I'm going to use my wet glue because it'll give you that wiggle room and you want to add it all within that one inch section around the three sides. Okay, I'm going to start from the bottom. There we go and I love this paper and that's why I chose this one for this particular style because I like that it's got all the stripes facing that way so that you almost can't seal, see that there's something concealed there. I'm going to add another tab there so it's easy to pull out and then it will slide up like so. Isn't that cute? It almost looks like one of those little shutters, you know, on like a, imagine like a ice cream van or something. It's got that kind of look about it. I'm sure some of you know what I mean. Okay, so now that's, that's the card done. So it will stand up like so, but now we need to decorate it and add all those little extras. So I am going to grab my topper got to stick it above that half inch score line so that will actually stay on show so if you put it in its kind of upright position okay it's easier to stick that way so I'm going to add glue all over this part here now I've got glitter on here but this glue should still be fine I can always replace it with the red tape if I find that it's not going to work and this way you can see that it overhangs equally you know and then I can just put my fingers inside there, make sure that's all stuck. And then I'm going to push it back down again. I can just push down on there, like so. Then I'm just going to grab some scrappy. I like to keep all mine together. Any collection I have, I always have a plastic file with the scraps in. I keep that with it. And I just, you'll find that you end up going to this more than breaking into more kind of four pieces of paper because you know everything you've got's in the, the bag. So I'm going to cut a little tab there and I'm going to stick this just behind Ooh. there 
like so. So it just makes that really easy to pull out. So again, just going to put some glue on just half to make sure that's in the middle. Okay, and now I'm going to decorate it some more. So I'm going to just speed the video up and you can just watch me stick all these bits down. Okay, so there is my finished card. I have stuck down the little bow and then I've run some washi tape there but I've also die cut this die here which comes in the die set I need to say that heart doesn't come in it just a small heart this is one that I already had but it goes well with this collection so I put it in there so I remember to use it but when this one die cuts it die cuts out this frame and then the three hearts so I've just die cut it a few times and I've put the hearts they fit perfectly over the hearts on the washi tape so I just thought it added some more sparkle and obviously we've got a little tab there now and that pulls up so you see what I mean it can come up much higher so if you do have a bigger message you have got the room but it, I mean that's it mine will kind of sit there but I just love it I love all the sparkle I love all the different areas you've got you don't have to put as many sentiments on it as I have but I actually quite like it it's a great card if you want to send someone something really motivational because they can just see all these different you know lovely kind of quotes and stuff so there's that one again show you the five by seven version which again I really love I just think it's super fun and that's the other style and how I decorated the other six by six and again just pulls up there and this one I've done circular as well which of course you would have known and seen but I didn't talk about it but yeah you can add different shapes and if you do look at the Santa one that I done last year that's not even a shape that's just little images that I fussy cut so yeah I really really like this it was nice to revisit um, an old card style I hope you enjoy it I hope you give it a go as always share over on the Mixed Up Crafters Facebook group and uh, yeah give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more thanks for watching bye Thank you.